Jason. Now, it's been a cruel oh, summer. Cruel summer. That's very good attempts, Thank Jeremy. Uh, Taylor Swift fans across the United Kingdom have fallen victim to a wave of ticket scams on social media ahead of the start of her Eras tour. In fact, Lloyds Bank estimates the million quid could already have been lost to fraudsters pretending to offer entry to the pop star's concert. A million pounds. Well, joining us now is consumer rights expert and Times columnist Martin James. Martin, good morning. That is an awful good. lot of money, isn't it? I imagine there'll be quite a few sad Swifties waking up to this news sad this morning. Sad Swifties. Yeah, it's a huge, huge scam at the moment. Loads and loads are being affected. And it even affects people who've really gone out of the way to fight back against touting, you know, people like Ed Sheeran as well. And one of the problems with this is the demand is just so high to actually get through the door to get to see Taylor Swift. And of course, with ticket prices costing upwards of 200 quid and much, much more for VIP packages, then actually it makes sense to law in people who might be desperate to spend some money. If you're just spending 50 quid on a concert, there's nothing really in it for uh, the various ticket touts. But this is endemic and it's only going to get worse. And Martin, that image we're seeing on screen there, is that an example of a fake or a real website? I don't know if you're even able to tell. <laughs> it certainly looks like one of the one of the fake ones. The problem is, it's incredibly easy to fake and um, convincing looking brands and websites. Now, as anyone who's received an email from the bank recently, mm. it turns out to be a fake one, will know. Um, you know, for very, very basic, simple software, you can create a whole fake website in less than 30 minutes for just a couple of quid. So it's really, really easy. It's very insidious as well because Frauds like this play on people's demand and their desire and um, to show their fandom and their support for the artists that they love. Now, one of the other things, you know, many of the people who will be watching this will be going, I'll never get conned by that. And that's completely ridiculous. But these scammers are really insidious. It's not like a one shot deal. And um, many of the people who've spoken out about this particular scam will have been lured into it after maybe finding a Facebook marketplace forum. There are loads of these fan groups out there where fans exchange information and share their top tips and their favourite songs. So you actually find that you build up a friendship with these people before somebody turns around and says, oh, I've got two spare tickets. And Martin, so the this, thing is, this, yeah. this is a wider issue of online scams, and we'll talk about, you know, maybe some techniques that people can take from you. There's a, another great story out today. Customers of Booking.com have told how they lost money after falling for a convincing scam whilst trying to book a summer holiday, 900 quid. This is everywhere, man. So let's just talk specifically. I mean, I can sit here and pontificate and say the high-tech companies need to take more involvement they make billions out of people they need to be able to do this but what can you say to everyday people so that they don't end up out of pocket well as you know jeremy i love a good pontificate myself and Ooh. i'm quite happy to point that finger of blame at those businesses but if you're shopping online there are a couple of really basic simple techniques that you can use first and foremost if you have one and you can trust yourself only pay on a credit card because okay. if you spend over 100 pounds on a credit card or less if you use your card to make a deposit you can actually go to the card provider if you get conned or if a, a legitimate business goes bust for example it's a good way to almost ensure yourself from getting ripped off and um, if you pay by debit card as well though as many of the people in the booking.com scam that you just mentioned um, have said if you contact your bank or card provider and they act quickly, they can often charge back that money. It's a really simple process. No, no, that, that, that's all well and good. I guess what I'm saying, but is the things... I mean, Nick made the point about that, that you couldn't tell. How can we tell that it's fake, or can't we tell it's fake? Uh, you can't, is the wow. simple answer. And you've just got to be incredibly, incredibly cynical. Um, if you're buying tickets or anything, it's not just concert tickets. Some of the big, posh events, you know, the opera festivals and things, also get targeted. Posh. Loads of sports events are also um, the ways that people get fleeced. So you can only really go through the official selling agents um, to actually resell tickets. But the problem with those is a lot of them are useless. They're really unfair. They're clunky and difficult to use. So the industry needs to up its game. Martin, what about when you have bought a ticket from somebody, say, just an individual, so not through one of these we fake websites, but for somebody that perhaps you put a message on Twitter or on Facebook saying, oh, I'd love a ticket for X, Y, Z, and that individual ends up to be a scammer. I'm guessing credit card companies wouldn't stump up the cash for that kind of mistake, no. would they? That's right, yeah, because usually under those circumstances, you'd be either handing over cash 
or you basically you'd be doing a money transfer. Now, people assume if you transfer money from your bank account, even if you do it there and then on your phone, you'll be covered. But no, if you make a money transfer from your account, it's as good as gone. Um, I often say to people, if you met someone on a street corner and they offered you um, two Taylor Swift uh, tickets and you gave them 200 quid and they'll, they said, oh, I'll just pop around the corner and go and get them, then you'd know that, that it's almost like you. It almost yeah. makes a ticket town look like a legitimate business. Martin, thank you as ever very much. I really appreciate you being on. Did you, you. Have I told you before about Mrs Kyle got conned on a tent? No. £700 tent, she said. You won't believe this, Jez. I found this online, 70 quid. Right, OK. Paid the 70 quid. Six weeks later, a £5 pendant arrived from China. <laughs> Seriously, £700 tent. And you go to yourself, of course it was a con. But we all fall for it. I think it's a really interesting thing. People have to it. watch out, right?